Hey guys, how's it going today? I've got something cool that I want to go over with you guys and I want to talk about why typically um, helicopters cost so much to operate. The hourly cost of operation and uh, there's a few different reasons for that but the one that we're going to specifically focus on today is the components of the helicopter. Uh, there's tons of components on this thing and normally in a, a standard helicopter each of those components has a life limit to it. So um, to use an example these blades for example on some helicopters might have a 2200 hour life or they might have a 4000 hour life or a 6000 hour life something like that like a Robinson product it's 2200 hours life on those in a Schweitzer it's 6,000 hours and so on and so forth. Um, the new 505 was I believe 4,000 hours or something uh, for a set of blades. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about some other examples but as, as one example these blades are about $20,000 a piece. There's $60,000 um, that you're going to have to replace after yeah, a set amount of hours, 2,200 hours or whatever it happens to be, right? Um, this drive shaft right here, okay, this is the tail rotor drive shaft. Um, that normally has a life limit on it. And so after the, the life is up, whether it's good or not, you just throw it in the garbage and you go get yourself another one. Um, these blades right here, these Fenestron blades, um, normally they would have a life limit on them. And then once they hit that life limit, whether they're good or not, you just throw them in the garbage. There's actually, let me show you this guys right here. This is kind of fun to, to look at. It's fun, but it's kind of sad. Um, so right here, just coming over to the boneyard, you've got this set of blades. They uh, they look a little beat up right now, okay? Um, these are Robinson R44 blades. And right now, I wouldn't really want to put those on a helicopter because they look pretty ratty. The reason they look ratty is because they've been laying here beside the tank for several months and they've got dirt and whatever all over them. Those were hacksawed off of a uh, an R44 because it reached its 2200 hour life limit and at, when it reaches that it's it's toast it's done right structurally those blades are amazing they're, they're perfect they could probably last a lot longer those specific ones um they're designed to last you know not <laughs> not super long just in the design um, method that they use to build it um, but definitely much longer than this life limit. So uh, what typically happens in manufacturing for helicopters is they design a component, the engineers all get together and they say, okay, um, let's, let's structural test this. Let's see, um, we'll put it as maximum possible um, testing and even beyond that. And then let's see where its fail points are. When will it fail? And they get these, uh, these models and they basically say, okay, that blade working at its absolute max will probably um, be fatigued and stressed. Uh, to the point where it's going to um, fail at let's say uh, 4,000 hours okay so what they do is they they cut that in half or they put a huge margin in there and then they say okay this uh, blade is now has a life of 2,000 hours or whatever it is that they decide for it okay that's the typical way it's done um, now the manufacturing process to create these components um, can vary a lot and um, what we found with modern technology and the way that the, uh, the manufacturing processes are being done nowadays, there's the ability for components to last much, much longer, okay? So looking at these blades, um, this is a, a composite structure, all right, mostly carbon fiber. It's got uh, some other elements inside of it. And this blade is, is built, I want to say bulletproof. It's, it's kind of bulletproof. You could probably shoot a gun right through here and, and still keep flying. It's pretty actually incredible um, what they've told us at the factory that they've, they've actually tested this. Um, you know, you can, you can get uh, holes in this thing and um, big gouges and stuff like that. And it's actually um, on a bench anyways, it, it's still safe enough to, to keep flying. Okay. So um, they, they build these components, some of them anyways, um, if, they, if they use the right manufacturing processes to be able to last an extremely long amount of time. And so certain manufacturers have had the ability now with the, the, um, the uh, styles that they're using to manufacture these things to call some of the components uh, infinite life, okay? It doesn't mean it's gonna last forever. Nothing, nothing's lasting forever. Even if you look at these blades, for example, um, you know, you can see some wearing here on the paint. That's not a big deal. You just repaint them. Um, here, a little bit in the in the carbon fiber, you can see a little bit of pitting and stuff like that just from the dust and things that we fly around in. Again, those, can, those are things that can be repaired, all right? Um, because it's a composite structure, you can actually repair those uh, tiny little um, ding marks from, from the rocks and things like that. So, 
these blades, they're, they're technically considered to be infinite life, all right? Pretty much everything on this helicopter, I've mentioned this in other videos, but pretty much everything on this helicopter is infinite life, so it's, it's to be determined, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, except for the engine right here, the gearbox that's up in there, and then uh, the tail rotor gearbox, which is back here. Those are the three components that still have a life limit. But the rest of the helicopter, this uh, tail boom right here, a lot of helicopters, they have a life limit to the tail boom, and once it reaches that, you just take off the tail boom, you go get yourself another one for 30 grand, 50 grand, whatever it's gonna be. Super expensive stuff, all right? And um, so what they've done is they've, they've created parameters and they said, okay, you need to inspect these components on a regular basis. And if it falls outside of the parameters that we're setting for you, if it's getting scratches that are X amount of uh, depth and length and so forth, or it has you know, any sort of de deformation, um, uh, denting, anything like that, right? Um, if it exceeds any of the standards that we're setting out, then that, that component needs to be replaced, okay? Um, another good example of one, is pitch links okay these guys right here typically pitch links will have a life um, limit like on the uh, Robinson 44 for example or the Schweitzer um, I believe it's 600 hours on the tail rotor pitch links okay the little guys like this and um, so you replace those it's 1200 bucks to replace two little pitch links that are about this big it's very expensive stuff and uh, that adds up when you have a lot of components on the helicopter and each one costs a lot of money you start getting a pretty big bill um, it doesn't take very long, okay? So again, they're saying, okay, we're gonna build these to a, a really high standard, really incredible um, materials and stuff that we can use nowadays, a uh, really high building process. And, um, and we're gonna allow you to do the inspections on those things and, and test to make sure that they're actually safe to keep flying. And if they are, then you can continue flying them. These blades, we don't know yet because we haven't flown them long enough, but, um, but we think they're probably going to last somewhere in the ballpark of 15,000 hours. So it's a massive, massive difference when you're talking about uh, a blade that will last 2,200 uh, two, uh, yeah, 2, hours, uh, like those ones over there, and then this one right here, which can last, mm, let's say, 15,000 hours if we take good care of it, okay? What does this all mean, you guys? Well, when you start adding up the cost of each of these components, and then you Put together the price of each one of those things at, at the life cycle that it's uh, supposed to be replaced at, you start getting a really big dollar figure. And if you can extend the life, they're not going to be infinite life, that's for sure. But if you can extend the life by a couple thousand hours, 5,000 hours, whatever, and you can uh, not compromise any safety, then all of a sudden you have, your you have yourself a helicopter that operates much cheaper, okay? And I think that's from, from my perception of what's coming, that's the direction that all the manufacturers are going now. So that's the way that uh, Gimbal did it. They have um, no uh, life limit components except for the engine and two gearboxes. And uh, Airbus is starting to go that way. A lot of the main, major manufacturers. I was actually pretty shocked when I, was, uh, when I did the Bell 505 test. I was fairly shocked to see that they hadn't done that for some of their components. Uh, to put a really nice composite blade on that helicopter, something that they know is gonna last 15,000 hours, um, but they say it's on condition, that would have been a really, that would have been a super smart move because those blades are gonna cost you a huge amount of dollars and that's gonna bring that operating cost of that 505 way, way up, which th that's why the cost is so high. Um, I found that the operating cost of that thing was staggeringly high for what it should have been for a modern design helicopter, okay? So um, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of perspective as to how that works. Um, I think in the future we're going to see people that are um, having the ability to be big game changers in the industry if they're using this type of uh, technology and this type of system. Um, they're going to be able to bring those operating costs down and, uh, and that's going to benefit all of us because at the end of the day, we all just want to fly helicopters, right? That's why you guys are watching this channel. Um, you love seeing helicopters, you love learning about them, um, and ultimately you want to fly them if you don't already. And, um, or you just might have interest in, uh, in the concept or in the, the machinery and stuff like that. But, um, but anyways, so it, it allows more people, if you can make the price point more accessible, it allows more people to experience um, just the amazing, incredible beauty of, of flying helicopters. Um, and the freedom that that can give you. So um, I hope that made sense. I hope it wasn't uh, too rambly for you guys. Uh, it was just a little overview into my ideas of why helicopters 
are expensive and how those costs are coming down um, because the Cabri is actually a, an affordable helicopter to fly, which is pretty cool. And um, if you guys like this video, please subscribe. If you haven't already, um, leave some comments below. I'd love to hear you guys' comments on this as well. And we're gonna talk to you guys in the next video. See ya.